1930s, as part of a new federal water management system, Parker Dam was built on the California-Arizona border, creating Lake Havasu. The damming of the Colorado River immediately transformed miles of barren desert into a playground for those who come for the summer sun or to escape the bitter cold of winter. On the Arizona side of the lake flourishes Lake Havasu City, the new home for the London Bridge. Across the lake from one of the fastest growing cities in the west lie 27 miles of largely undeveloped shoreline. These lands located in California and totaling over 28,000 acres were deeded to the Chimuevi Indians by the federal government in the early 70s as reparation for the flooding of their ancestral homelands when the dam was built. This area is of great historical significance to our people, the Nau Chimuevi, because of the fact that we feel that some of these stories that are told in these rocks were of episodes of great hunts, especially of the bighorn sheep that once roamed in here. You've heard me refer to our term Nau Chimuevi or Shemuevi. The Mojave people called us a Shemuev, which through about 200 years of time and evolution, the name changed to what is now referred to as modern day Shemuevi. Uh, Nu'u means the people of the desert, and that has been the name that's been carried down since time immemorial uh, and identified us as the people of the desert, or the Southern Paiute, as archeologists also refer to us as. Name Shemuevi came about from uh, the name that the Mojave people called us, a Shemuev. And uh, the, with the three elders that I've sat down and spoken with, Mojave elders from the Needles area of California, they have more or less interpreted it to be the people who played with the fish or the people that played in the water. I want to live in the place where I was born and see the choyas and ocotillos in bloom. I want to see the clear blue skies over Ecohome the mountain on which my mother played as a child. I want to roam as far as I can along the river and see the burros drinking from the bank. I want to take a boat ride on the lake and peer deep into the water and see my old home 50 feet down. I want to see the tops of the dead cottonwoods beneath the water. I am not a fish and cannot play among them, but they are grim reminders of a happy past. I want to close my eyes and see the valley as it was before. 25 years after first gaining recognition for their tribe, the Chimuevis have developed tribal enterprises that gross over $4 million a year. Tribal members, who number approximately 550, are scattered all over the country. About 130 make their home on the reservation. The potential for continuing development of tribal lands, especially when compared to the phenomenon of Lake Havasu City, is enormous. Reservation lands offer the potential for recreational development with new marinas, hotels, and housing. The lands are also prime for agriculture and mining. But, but in 1991, 
the tranquility of the Chimuevi Valley was rocked, as Indians and non-Indians alike united in a common cause against a tribal government that had its own vision for the future of the reservation. We had a paradise here, absolute paradise. This is gorgeous. This is a paradise, a desert paradise. We're on the lake. There was no problems. Until Christine Walker and her administration came into power. She is the worst, I'll tell you. The woman is just completely corrupt. She was a security guard in the gate, and we called her stone face. Never cracked a smile. You very rarely ever see her smile. I mean, she just absolutely got a stone face. And that's what she is, a stone face. And people are just tired of her. And things are bad here. The people really don't know how bad things are here. We're fighting for our lives. We're being raped here. So we're not putting up with it anymore. That's all there is to it. Something drastic is going to happen. And that's going to cause a whole big turmoil out here on this planet. Because that's what it's coming down to. It's pure war. At the insistence of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the Christine Walker administration raised the rent on trailer park leases to non-Indians. Wanda, why are you sitting out here on a beautiful day like this when you could be inside uh, enjoying yourself? Because as it stands right now, we may not have a home very long. Mm -hmm. the, it looks as though they're going to take our homes away from us. Because of our leases being declared invalid over 16 months ago by the present Tribal Council, we had what we thought was a valid lease. It was signed by the Bureau of Indian Affairs and by the general manager of the landing, uh, but they declared it invalid, and that's how I originally got involved in this conflict. They told me that it was invalid. It was no good. And now then, they're telling me that I'm a trespasser. And I put a new trailer up on the hill here about two and a half years ago. I got about $130,000, $140,000 stuck in it. And right now, it's not worth a damn. The bank, there's nobody alone. You can't sell. If you sell, you got to give the Indians 10%. And it's just a, a big farce, you know. If uh, I signed the lease that they proposed to me, that I could stay, I wouldn't be a trespasser. But I will not sign the lease that they want me to sign. We're crazy if we sign them. We're signing all our rights away. When you pay rent for 20 years, what's the lease worth? I think as long as you pay your rent, you don't need a lease. My friend, Mrs. Bender here, she's alone. She lost her husband. She lives on Social Security. If she loses her mobile up here, what's she gonna do? I need to have my home. I need to have that place to live. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go live with my kids. That's a no-no. I could live there for about six weeks. But that would be real rough to do. Most will agree that rent hikes were necessary. Past tribal administrations had undervalued the leases, and rent on prime properties was below market value. But other issues also raised the ire of the homeowners. They're paying an old rent of $177 a month. They raised our rent to $400 without any notice or anything. That isn't the problem. Our rent is not the problem. They should have had an increase before this. We agree to that. But when we have to turn over our insurance policies to them, they're the beneficiaries if our mobile homes burn. The leaseholders on the uh, resorts uh, have, have no redress in the American judicial system because of this notion of sovereign immunity. With my limited understanding, I believe that the leaseholders uh, uh, would only have recourse to the sitting tribal government. Which at this point in time is controlled by one faction, uh, and one faction only. I understand that. <laughs> but it's turned into much more than that since then. I guess because of our lease situation, we became much more aware of the suppression that the tribal mem members have been living under for several years under this chairperson. And so we've all gotten involved trying to help them in their efforts to rid themselves of this person. Indian tribe, Council will not let state 
weights and measures come into their area to check their pumps. We've had several complaints about uh, the pumps not being accurate. Uh, state weights and measures comes down and then the uh, tribal uh, council uh, comes out and tells them to get off the property. Uh, the gas station right outside the landing has to uh, abide by all states and uh, weight measure uh, ordinance and they have tags down there at their gas stations. Every one of these pumps down here, all the tags have been taken off and you don't know what you're buying. It's just buyer beware. The FAA spent uh, 1.3 million out there on an airport that has had very little use and they want $25 tie down fees when across the lake if you land it's $6 for tie down and if you gas up they waive the tie down fees. So who's going to land on an airport that's going to charge that kind of money? With no facility. With no also. facility, no gas even. They're ha charging people $8 to launch your boats down here. You can go any place on the lake and launch your boats for three or four dollars. So she's just ripping off the whole public. It's not right for people out of Orange County, LA, San Diego to come down here on vacation. It's a resort area. She's operating it. The woman that runs the tribe have hurt her own tribe probably worse than she's trying to hurt us or the people that live here on the landing. They will not allow the county health inspector in here to inspect the restaurant. Two or three people, uh, boatloads of people have turned around and left after they seen the sign and uh, didn't want to take a chance on it. And then the fellow that just came out of here just before you stepped up here uh, said he wished he'd seen the sign before he went in because his food, he's come here quite often. He said in the last year, the food has gotten worse and worse here. In the early part of January, Christine Walker ordered the American flag removed from all tribal businesses here at the Havasu Landing Resort. That's what made us mad, really, because many of our husbands are veterans of several different wars. They said that they wouldn't fly it, and they told everybody that they hadn't flown it because they needed to repair the flagpole, and uh, they didn't seem to be able to get around to it, yet me and uh, two other people got an extension ladder, and within 15 minutes I bought the parts and we had it fixed, and the flag is now flying. And when she said, you cannot fly the American flag on this Na Indian reservation, that did it. That started the whole thing. Uh, on January 9th, uh, a group of citizens, one by one, started to ga started a gathering to fly their personal flags uh, in support of our American flag. And we've been here for almost three months now. Ninety, how many days? Ninety some days. And uh, nothing has been done, and uh, the, the BIA won't step in. The BIA is dragging their feet. They just won't. Help us, I says. They keep telling us back, giving us a big backwash that it's internal matter, that we have to handle it ourselves. So the only way we're going to handle it is going to be turned into violence pretty soon. On January 10th, I was terminated from my position with the Havasu Landing Resort for my participation in the flying of the American flag. It is a dictatorship. It is not a democracy. Democracy has been gone for going on four years this month. Um, it's a, her uh, passion for power and greed and to manipulate and control people's lives. Uh, nobody could ever imagine that something like this could happen in the United States. Hello, is this the Christine Walker residence? Uh, my name's Larry Cano, and I'm here at the reservation doing a documentary about the situation that's ongoing, and would like to speak with uh, Ms. Walker and get her side of the story, some any comments that she can give me. Ms. Walker, would you mind at all if I tape recorded this conversation? Okay. Miss Walker, Larry Cano again. Okay. I do appreciate you taking some time with me here. No, that's fine. I know it's much needed. Can you tell me who's on the council now? Uh, well, there's myself, and there's Patricia Martis, Lavina Goodman, Mary Swick, Margaret Garcia, uh, Domingo Escara, Ralph Escara. Did I leave anybody out? Betty Escobar. So you have a full council. Nina, yeah, Nina Smith. I believe that's the... Uh, is it possible for me to speak with any of those folks? Well, they, the only ones that live here is my, that are here today would be myself and my daughter. 
Of the people that you named on this council, uh, how many of them are your relatives, Ms. Walker? How many are my relatives? Yes, please. Actually, all of them are my relatives. What we're all uh, really um, fighting it for is to get rid of the dictatorship here and have a new council, a fair one for the people, the general people, and one that is for the people, which we do not have at this time. I've seen such a, a council not care about their people or their reservation. It seemed like they were out to destroy both the people as well as the reservation. I was doing some consulting work for Intertribal Council of California. They got some newly um, money for Head Start programs that was part of the expansion program from Washington. And one of the new centers that they wanted to develop was here at Chimawapi Valley. And so I was hired as a consultant to come out, check out the feasibility of it, do the hiring of the staff, and locating the site where it was to be held. We never got it underfoot, unfortunately. We had the money in place. We had the equipment in place. The equipment was already held here in storage. We had the site picked out, which was going to be the new community hall, which would have been ideal for the program. We had uh, the enthusiasm of the parents. The need was here. Everything was there, uh, except the blessing of the tribal council because they couldn't control it. Uh, does that have any reason why the Head Start program was disbanded? No, that's no reason why the oh the head start. Yes. The people that um, <coughs> the people that were uh, going to come down and uh, do that, they were supposed to sign a contract with the tribe to lease the building and, and use our equipment and everything else, and they never did the big one. Two weeks ago, one of our council members, uh, she lives here half part time and up in Las Vegas part time. She, Messina Escobar, she was denied access into the tribal council to conduct tribal business and she is a, once again I stress she is a council member. Went to the door and asked to go in to talk to, talk to her and then she went and let us in she'd slam the door in her face and, and we'd call and she wouldn't talk to us on the phone and I thought I had that right to do that. Lucina attempted to get in with letters written of complaint to her and to address her but the doors were kept locked for her. This uh, council hall is behind me, and it was always open to the tribal members. That's one of the reasons we have it, so our tribal people can come to our office and ask any information concerning tribal matters. This is one of our given rights on our reservation. Uh, when was the last time you had an open meeting, Ms. Walker? An open meeting? Well, not since the protest, we haven't, since January. And uh, is there a particular reason why the meetings are now closed? Oh, we, we just closed our whole building off to the public because of the, uh, the harassment and the death threats that we've had there. You had a death threat? Oh, we have them all the time. Then she says that people threaten her this and that. It's just the other way around. I'm getting tired of this too. Like I told you, I've, I've been a, I've seen the death camps over in Dachau. Europe, near Munich, about something like this. I guess it starts, Hitler started. Peggy McCormick, the Housing Authority Executive Director, uh, uh, she issued orders for 19 people to be evicted out of their homes. Kind of sad when uh, HUD money is spent and the houses are setting empty with nobody living in them. And there is people here that could use those homes. Why, are, why is nobody permitted to live in those homes? Because she has had them evicted. They are controlling the housing. The people that work for her are controlling the housing and who's eligible to be there. Christine Walker and Peggy McCormick, who is heading the housing for her, has a, has a personal vengeance against some of these people. Is that the reason why some of those buildings are vacant? The, the reason why the buildings are vacant is because they vandalized those buildings and we had to board them up to keep them from further vandalizing them. I see. It was just... Un, uh, unfathomable and thought that it would get this bad and we are up against dealing with 98 percent unemployment. There are about 60 people that are employed in the Havasu Landing Resort, an enterprise of the Chimawavi tribe and out of the 60 there are about four people that are tribal members that are working on this resort. 
the tribal members can't get work here. And she's bringing all of these outsiders to work here, people that really don't belong here. And the people that live here, tribal members can't get a job. And if they hire them, they fire them just like that. That is not right. Because everybody's on welfare. Or some kind of aid, you know. And a lot of these people and families have children. And I told her that one time. I said, you were taking the food out of my grandchildren's mouth. How many people employed by the, uh, the reservation and the landing? The reservation and the landing? The landing, I think there's, there's probably about 30 during the off season, and then there's about 75 during the, uh, during the, uh, you know, our busy season, like Easter and up until Labor Day. Can you tell me how many are employed now? How many are employed at this time? Yes, ma'am. At the landing, there's probably about 35 or 40. Can, do you know how many of those uh, happen to be tribal members? There's a... Uh, maybe there's seven. Okay. At the landing. Because she wouldn't hire none of the people because she said they were all alcoholic and drug addicts. Are they? No. There's some good people here. And as far as what these people are saying about jobs, um, the same people are not working are the same people that don't want to work. The people that are working are the people that want to work. People have to move out to, to make a living. You know, we, we have tribal people that have to go behind the store and, and, and see if they find any food, day old food or anything. That's, that's real sad. That, that really jeopardizes, yeah. you know, their, their living. Um, people that are 86, okay. uh, which is uh, a term for addiction. In the 86 list, I will explain, is um, the original protest that we had with, uh, was all Indians or spouse of Indians. And we held up signs and marched down to the restaurant around and came back. And we are noted to be violent. They can't go into the store and buy milk or cheese or bread because they're on this list. And if the employees sell the, the food to the, or to the customers, they can lose their job, again, for disloyalty. How many people are on this list? There's about 26, if I'm not mistaken. And the majority are tribal people that oppose what Christine has said. They don't make it desirable, and they haven't for a long time, for anybody to want to be here. And we've, we've seen several people pull their homes out of here. And if, if things don't get adjusted and changed soon, you're going to see more trailers leave. And I feel sorry for the, for the tribal members that are, care about this land and care about the area and care about the people and want to see just things get better for themselves and us, because we're all here together. It's one community. It's kind of governed by one family and one family only. Um, I would say the, not only politics, the greed of the money. Let me ask you about, uh, there's been a lot of allegations about misappropriation of, of tribal monies. Uh, can you tell me the accounting practices that you used and how you account to the tribe for the expenditures of your, uh, your budgets and so forth? Well, every year they're giving a, they're giving a financial uh, status on the, uh, on the accounts. It's our tax dollars that it's being given to her in the form of government grants through the Bureau of Indian Affairs and through other agencies, and it's being squandered by her. It's not being used for the purpose that it's given for. You know, we don't know where it goes. You know, we know you, that we receive the funds, but we don't know where this money's spent. It's going in the chairman and her family's pockets. That's exactly where it's going, because not one thing is done here. Nothing. Some of these folks, same folks, make the same allegations that there's money's being misspent now and so forth. Uh, are you willing to, to the proper authority to show your accounting and your books that all the monies under your control have been properly executed? Yeah, we'll be doing that as soon as uh, we have our, our audit. They might be keeping separate books too, you don't know that. If the auditors come around, they probably have two sets of books, I'm sure of that. What Ms. Walker has done is monopolize the system, and uh, we cannot break the link chain right now. Every agency that we know, we have contacted them, from the Bureau, uh, from the Department of Justice, the Civil Rights, um, our congressmen, they're all fully aware of the situation. 
and basically they come back and say it's an internal problem. There's been no accounting to this tribe in a two and a half year period. And that's what Christine said. She told me that. That's yes. what she told you. She told me that. There's been no accounting by Christine to whom? To either, to the tribal members. Okay. Do you have a Understood. comment on that? Is that a normal uh, procedure that uh, goes on within uh, tribes in the United States and within the Bureau? Not that I'm familiar with. If in fact uh, that is true, would that be a, a serious uh, uh, situation that the Bureau would be interested in uh, getting to the bottom of? The, the non-accounting to the tribal members is the business between the accountant members, the, the, the members of the tribe, and the standing uh, government. And it wouldn't be a concern to the Bureau of Indian Affairs? Well, I haven't said that. As I feel that they think they had more control that it, they, than they actually have in the Constitution, you know, that they've just um, abused the Constitution through, to their advantage and ignored the fact that the tribal members have the authority to, to make changes when they think those changes need to be made. The people that wrote the Constitution is the one that made the mistake. They need safeguards in their Constitution. You know, we've talked about that. That'll be done once they adopt the new Constitution, tribal Constitution. But uh, their Constitution would just void in terms of uh, check and balances. And you just happen to get a person in that, or a group in that took advantage of it. I brought my whole family down for the annual meeting, and they did not have a meeting here. So we took my family and a few others, and we went down to the council building to talk to Christine and Pat. And they told us that we did have the annual meeting, but it was not up there. We were all up there. There was about 60, 70 of us up there waiting for it. We all left that day feeling disillusioned and, that we had, and very upset about we had been denied participation in the annual meeting. Uh, approximately 60 voters that, uh, voting members that attended this function of the annual meeting last year were denied the right to vote. Last year there were nine of us that um, submitted petitions to uh, seek election to the council hoping to have our names on the, uh, uh, the um, ballots for the last council meeting. Everyone that applied to, to be nominated to run for council were disqualified for one reason or another. You know, just <clears throat> in the, the committee, in, the election committee was uh, the family of the existing council, so everybody was disqualified. I asked the election committee why I was disqualified. The only thing that I was told was that the determination of the election committee is final. No further explanation. We just got robbed last year, and the same thing's happening this year. We're getting robbed again. Since last year and now for this year, absentee ballot voting is the only thing that this administration has allowed, which hinders uh, what we feel is a fair democratic process that was ongoing up until this administration came into power. What is your method for uh, for balloting? Okay, balloting, it's all uh, absentee ballot. It's all absentee ballot? Mm-hmm. And where do those ballots, where are they sent? They're sent to the election committee. And the election committee has sole power to validate those ballots? Uh, the election committee, yes, when they're open. So uh, you don't prefer any kind of a, a voting where everybody can do it uh, under one roof, so to speak? We used to do that, and they harassed the people so bad it was pathetic. Who, who harassed? Those same people that you've been talking to. The uh, People Speak Committee? Oh, yes. The, the People Speak is everybody that believes in justice, and this group that we have right now is, is fighting for that. And just because you see us four here, we're representing the rest of the tribe because you know we need open communication but through this committee uh... which we do not receive any money or we we don't have any money or anything we put out information to the rest of the tribe to let them know what's going on now they're telling us this is a sovereign nation and they do not have to abide by any laws uh... federal state or county we are not in fact citizens anymore we're without homes. We're without a nation. Uh, what's your interpretation of that? Yes, ma'am. That we're a government, just like any government, federal government, or any other government. Are you a democratic government? Uh, I feel that we are. 
but she was wrong with the way she's using it. It's for the tribe, not the individual members. Sovereign immunity is for a tribe, you can't sue a tribe. So she's liable and the rest of the council people or anybody that did illegal acts, they're liable. They can't hide behind the uh, sovereign immunity the tribes have. The tribe has it, not an individual. That's something to keep in mind. <laughs> One thing I don't like, they call us a sovereign nation. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the people have stated, some of the higher-ups that they've phoned and contacted have made this statement, well, we can't do anything about it. That's a sovereign nation. Well, my feeling is if it's a sovereign nation, let's keep them on the landing. Let's don't let them in the United States. If they're going to do this to us, let us do this to them. The limited knowledge that I have with regard to sovereign immunity refers to the, uh, the, the right that tribes, in this case, have as a result of their being Indians and being recognized by the federal government, either through treaties, through uh, executive order, or uh, congressional action. And uh, sovereign immunity is a long-standing principle that most of the tribes uh, defend very much. The Bureau of Indian Affairs is, is, is the worst agency or bureau there is in government. Talk to anybody, they're ineffective, inefficient. Um, they should step in and take the position that, okay, if there's that much turmoil and you have such a split, then why don't they supervise an election? It's in the regulations where they can do it and they're supposed to. Well, there hasn't been any violence on the lines, hasn't there? Well, they, has there? They've had guns out there. They've been, they're armed, those protesters. There's never been this much hatred anywhere, and at any time towards any council. It's totally their wrongdoing, and they must pay for their mistakes. I have to love that lady. I don't have to like her. Right. <laughs> but I have to love her. Right. I have to say to her, you are human, and what you're doing, you're going to be responsible for when you exactly. go up there. I don't hold any hatred for Christine or for the people on the council. I don't hate them. As, pers as people, I just hate what they stand for, the way they are ruining what this reservation. We, we don't believe in violence. This is 1992. Well, we're not here at Wounded Knee. We're, we're not here to, to for bloodshed. No, these are all our people here, and we want to live in harmony, and we're doing the best way we can. We're just hoping that when this is over is that we still have a, a reservation. Well, back in the old, old days, that when the chief was hired, I mean, uh, when the chief was appointed for the tribe, he took all the duties of, the, of uh, looking out for the welfare of the people, and uh, and if he didn't, if uh, he didn't work out, if he didn't do his duty, well, the people had the right to oast him out. And like the OT says, that if he felt that he wasn't doing it, well, he he'd to leave. That's the way it was. The people. I mean, have you ever concern, uh, considered resigning over all this? Nope. I'm not going to do it. But if I resign, the only way I would ever resign for council, if I knew that we could put people into council that would carry on the functions here and make something of this reservation, make it a, make it a, or, you know, that landing down there. But this one don't feel like she's wrong. See, I can't understand that. But that time, the chiefs say, yeah, I am wrong, and he'd go off, you know. But this one won't go off. We had a lot of recalls, papers. I even went in there told her to get off. I, I didn't cuss her. I said, please, you know, why don't you get out of the council? You're not doing any good. When you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> Tell me the 25th, things have to change, or this place is ended. There's no more of this place. I do have a lot of hope. I do have a lot of prayer for our people that uh, this will all be resolved. Well, how do you see this crisis here on, on your reservation being resolved? Well, what are you uh, classifying as a crisis? Well, I mean, if you say there's violence and you say that there's protesters and uh, that you can't talk with them and they are tribal members, uh, most of them I would think. Uh, aren't they uh, something that has to be dealt with at some point in time? Well, if they had a legitimate, uh, something legitimate to talk about those tribal people, um, I'd be more than welcome to talk to them. 
But they don't have any legitimate thing. They can't even carry on a conversation, a civilized conversation. Something's wrong with their brain. <laughs> They're all that way. I can't believe this, people. They don't know they're wrong. We don't want violence. Let that be known. We waited this long, you know. We got them protesters out there for their leases. That's a whole different story. You know, we've been protesting for three years, three and a half, close to four years against this woman. And everybody's always agreed. Uh, we've got together and said, let's do it the legal way. And we've tried, we've been to every government branch agency, asked for their help, and they have done nothing. More or less the bottom line is they says, it is your problem. But all these agencies are gonna be accountable for every action because we went to them first. And we're, we're trying to follow that legal procedure. Christine Walker hired a private police force to patrol the reservation. And that's not what we want. We don't want a police department that's under the tribe's control or under the council's control. At this point in time, at least not under this current administration. America had better wake up to the fact that this isn't the only reservation going through this, but this is our reservation, and it is happening here. This organized crime family in the disguise of a tribal government, and it's got to end. Her only real supporters at this point are the federal government agencies that continue to recognize her and work with her through the grants processes and everything else that they can get. And the low it's life a sham. That it's they all hire. a sham. Well, I think if people talk to one another, and it's maybe better than letting violence occur, wouldn't you agree? I don't know. As the situation reached a boiling point and violence appeared imminent, the federal government finally moved. The FBI, in concert with local authorities and the Inspector General's Office of the Department of the Interior, served a search warrant on Christine Walker and members of her council. So are you the one that uh, started the federal probe, basically? That kind of helped, I guess you'd say. I was shocked. It was so many uh, federal agents out there, sheriff departments, carrying boxes out. And I, uh, according to the paper, they brought some guns out. So we stayed around and taped it. That's about it. Then we came back here. And then they raided the uh, council house over there and uh, busted the door open with a crowbar. They had a hard time getting it open, but they went in. A trailer load of documents was carted off to Sacramento and placed under the control of the inspector general. No arrests were made, however, and Christine Walker and her supporters fled the reservation. Well, I think you're going to see a lot of people in, in charge of criminal activity in the, in the Bureau. I think they're criminally involved, to my personal view. To what level? At least the area office, if not higher. I think there's some questions about it going extremely all the way up to Washington, D.C. That's being looked into, of course. Not knowing if Christine Walker and her council would return, tribal members gathered for their annual meeting. I want to thank you for coming out here on a Saturday. I know it's real difficult for many of you to get out here since you don't live around here anymore. But we feel and we believe it's very important that you get out here and you know what's going on and to see what's happening with your reservation at this time. Um, we're going to have the meeting at the Firebell Station, which is just up on the hill in about five minutes. But the reason we met here is because we believe that we should meet in front of our council building. And uh, so you can get to see one another again and talk and get reunited. Um, before we go, I'd like to take a moment of silence here. We lost one of our tribal person, somebody that was loving. You know, we're going to miss them very much. Um, his name is Milo Hanks, for anybody that doesn't know. And again, he's been beloved and he's going to be dearly missed. And we know he's at a better place right now. A lot of our members have lost their lives. 
But in spite of all that, we have to persevere as a, as a tribe. And by all you people being here today, it gives us all strength to carry on. That's what our forefathers have left us. voters list was prepared by the People's Speak Committee and it's based on uh, the uh, tribe's 1987 and 1988 uh, membership roll and also other tribal roles that we managed to get our hands on. Donald B. Hanks, Roberta Hanks, Jenny P. Harper, Teresa Vasquez Hartzell, Tina Marie Haynes, Adrian Hernandez, at this point, the way we see it, we do not have a tribal government. And I think everybody's under the same understanding is that they were, they are here, or they were here, they're gone, and we hope they're going to stay gone. Yeah. But nevertheless, yeah. the, the spirit of the many people is here in, in our hearts. This, this man is uh, Bud Brown. He's the acting superintendent of the Colorado River Agency that serves our area. I am the acting superintendent. I've been here about five weeks. We're here today just to observe. And I know a lot of you have questions that you'd like to have answered, but that's not my position today. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and I can't even go into those things. I want to know why the BRA wheels back up Christine Walker when half her reservation, half her, half her people are against her. More and half the people are against her, and why you won't stand behind the Chimuevi people. We did not elect her in there. Her daughter held that election. She herself appointed her, her, her own self as our leader. The people didn't. So now why when the people, are, we Chimuevi people are crying for justice, why won't the BIA stand behind us? Why she won't you help her? She has moved instead of Chimuevi people out of here. Excuse me. I, I want to hear his answer. I would like to give you the answer. Okay. The um, federal government has stand up to recognize the government to government relationship. Okay, good. They do not get in and interfere. And that is the reason why. Okay, now there you have it right there. Why does this have a double standard? You say internal affair, but yet. BIA takes a side, and it's not with the Chimuevi people. You leave us in poverty and despair, helpless, at the mercy of this mad you woman. You driving down the road. Okay? Is, uh, what does the membership want to do at this point? And uh, one thing that we were going to suggest to the membership is that we appoint or elect an interim council. Now, all this lies on, on your court, the membership. I think it's time to make a move, but I think that we should send at least a psychological message to the government of this country. I move that we hold an election today to elect an interim tribal government which will preside until the Secretary of the Interior holds an official, official government election. Council members and Matt Lavis as its chairperson. Remarkably, a change of leadership was made democratically and without any violence. The new government is put in place will be recognized. Those are the type of questions that I won't answer. Is after the people met in public, Christine Walker and her council met in private, taking these photographs while on the outskirts of the reservation and sending them to the BIA as proof that they had held an official annual meeting. After the election, and for the first time in several years, the Chimuevi celebrated.
struggled to get back on its feet. Homeowners who refused to sign new leases still faced eviction. At the urging of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the interim council enforced the terms of the leases proposed by the Walker administration. A group of homeowners decided to sue the tribe on a technicality discovered by their attorneys. They contend that the Department of the Interior did not follow correct procedure in establishing the reservation in the first place. Now, legal title to tribal lands will be questioned in federal court. A BI has done nothing. That's what motivates us to do this, number one. And, you know, she's been in exile three months now, four months. So she's not returning. And the Bureau should open their eyes to that right now. Uh, we were supposed to have an election between 90 and 120 days. And now we're hearing eight months. Well, we can't wait eight months. We, we need an election now. She's asking a drawdown for the tribal funds um, in, in the amount of or around the amount of $400,000. We don't know what it's for, but one of the comments from one of the Bureau uh, was, uh, you know, she is a recognized council, so we should honor that, and that's a bunch of BS. I don't think that everybody in the, within the Bureau system is, are bad apples. I think there are some good men, good people among them, and that those good people are pushing for us. Although BIA recognition was not forthcoming, it did not take long for investors to realize the potential the reservation had to offer. The process of selling tribal members on investment and development had begun. In about a year, I can have the hotel up with the golf and everything. So you're looking at about a total of 18 months for the whole entire package to be up and running. If you can look. We have asked him to do some renderings of what the general style would look like. This is called prairie, modern prairie style. It's very much wood, stone, and copper. It will be totally indigenous to your landscape. In documents found in the council house after her departure, it appeared that Christine Walker was about to finalize agreements to build a gambling casino and hotel on the reservation. Gaming on tribal lands is a hot issue and continues to divide the Chimawavis. What do you think of gambling on the reservation? No. You know, that would have to be a decision that's made by the people themselves. I would put it to, the, to them to vote on whether they want it here or not. But I think we ought to have a general consensus yes. as to yes. whether yes. the members of the tribe would like to consider one of these proposals, such as gambling and, and a hotel on the reservation. So all those in favor? Another lawsuit was filed in September uh, at the direction of the interim council. The interim council filed lawsuits, petitions, and brought pressure to bear on the BIA. Almost a year later, and coinciding with the change in federal administration and a new Secretary of the Interior, the BIA finally allowed the tribe to speak. It authorized a vote on amendments to the tribal constitution, leading to the official recognition of the interim council and a new election. Okay, the result of the election, 118 people voted in favor, nine people voted against, and there were three spoiled ballots. Finally, the tribe assembled once again, this time to vote in its new tribal administration. Okay, first one with uh, number one votes, Irene Kellywood has 
if a recall petition and all the proper procedures are met to replace you or any of the board members by the voting members of the tribe, are you are you willing to uh, step aside? I don't think that'll ever happen. What is this council going to do different? For all good, fair business practices. We don't want to violate anybody's civil rights. What we're trying to do is in the right name of righteousness and for the people and <clears throat> by the people. And the people are elected here by the people. And we're going to carry out the tribal constitution to the best of our ability. And if a referendum is, is needed, then that's what we have to do to change that constitution. So things like what happened with Christine Walker and her abuse of power and authority will no longer happen here on this reservation. Two years have passed since Christine Walker was voted out of office. Much has improved on the reservation. There's a new Head Start program. The HUD office is open and once again providing low-cost government housing. Many Chimawabies, once without work, now have jobs. Well, people have a chance to work. Um, now they don't have an excuse not to work. There's plenty of jobs for everybody now. It's helped out. Been the bottom of the herd, huh? Oh gosh, it's been a long time since we had any type of festivities like this out here. Everybody coming together and just enjoying themselves. God, it's just a good feeling. See everybody with smiles on their faces and having a good time. And eating. Deciding to introduce gaming on their own without outside investors or management. The Tribal Council has installed a small number of video pool tab machines in their resort bar. Now a fight with the state of California over the legality of the machines is almost certain. As yet, neither Christine Walker nor any member of her council has been charged with criminal activity. And unfortunately, some tribal members allege that many of the abuses of the Christine Walker administration continue under the current tribal council. Uh, when Christine left, I thought the cancer was gone, but there are traces still. You can still see traces of this cancer within this council administration. A lot of things have occurred here since uh, Christine's administration was voted out. and. Uh, a lot of it has been uh, very controversial. A lot of it has been uh, very negative towards the community and the tribal members. You know, it's funny. Before people get into council, they're a different person. This power, once they get, it goes to their head. And they forget who they are or where they came from. Are you doing a good job? I, f I feel that. You know, I spend a lot of time in here and a lot of time home reading that, that I can make clear decisions on what we need to do and propose solutions for what we need to accomplish. And if that's not doing your job, I don't know what's, what it is. We hear there's uh, problems within the administration with accounting records now. Uh, our financial uh, manager who works in the office has brought up questions, questioning them where money and grants are going. There's always going to be people that are critical of any administration, no matter what year or who's in that administration. If I have any hope, it's that you know the tribal people here will understand that it's going to take time for anything to get straightened out here. It can take years before we finally get to the point where we, we all really want to be. And I, I see right now a lack of patience from some tribal members. Perhaps the problem lies in the inherent dilemma of government itself, that it is impossible to please all the people, all the time. Or maybe there's just too much at stake. The management of the tremendous economic potential of the reservation would be a daunting task for anyone. One thing is for certain, to see that progress is forged with integrity, accountability, and with regard for the interest of all members is the challenge for tribal leaders to stay active and involved in their future development is the task for all Chimawebis. 
that's a big responsibility. And um, if you, you can't please everybody. You just can't. And uh, there's going to be pro and con. Um, there's always going to be family members. We're all related. Um, it's just going to be hard. The way I feel, it's hard to please everybody. The concentration is not to avoid controversy on the reservation. It's just to make sure that when you have those controversies in the future, that they're done in an orderly way, according to law, and respecting the rights of everybody. And I hope that that's what we've achieved. It's, it's a way of doing business. This isn't Indians. Indian people's traditional way of doing business, this council thing. It, uh, you know, this is what the Bureau of Indian Affairs idea, this is their idea of how Indian people should do, do business. And the way they do business, in, you know, the good ways, the bad ways, such as the abuses of power that are happening right now, those aren't Indian ways. These are things that are introduced, that I honestly believe, are introduced to Indian people by the non-Indian community. A lot, a lot of Native Americans need to be culture, be aware of their culture, and to get back to its grassroots. And you know, we can solve our own problems instead of relying on the BIA. I think the BIA should be totally done away with. We we are losing our Indian values, and we have to get back to that. And we have to reinforce that in our children, so that when their children are coming up, they have this beautiful place that their ancestors left them. What grow? I'm living in this place, watching it grow, seeing all the non-Indians come down with their toys, their boats, their jet skis, and you know I think it's time to put the glove on the other hand, and it's time for the Indians to get paid or drive those cars and boats and jet skis and take advantage of it and live like everybody else on their own property very sad in, in many ways because my people my family had many hopes and we still do and we have a lot of dreams and that's why we're still here because one day this dream will come alive and you know everybody will come together and we haven't given up that dream I want my people to unite as a tribe without bickering, for bickering is for children and we are not. I want us older ones to work harder and pave the way for the younger generation and pass the torch to them so they may carry on where we left off. I want these young people to be interested in their heritage and to be involved in current tribal problems. I want to work unselfishly for our posterity and be able to say that I did my bit. I'd like to set the calendar back 50 years so that I could devote more of my life. Each day as I grow older, I am happy in knowing that our children's future will be secure. One day I'll sit in my rocking chair and gaze happily over this land called Chemoibi Valley. <laughs> Why you, 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 why you,